Now, back live with Paul Murray. Thank you very much for watching. Here with three free thinkers, three blokes who do not uh, hold back, and it's always good to have them here. Senator David Lionhelm, representing the Liberal Democrats in uh, the Federal Parliament, Senator for New South Wales, Labor MP for Prospect in the State Parliament in New South Wales, be none other than the great Hugh McDermott, and the man who's got a book coming out, let's put it on the telly. Tell us, Rowan Dean, why does everyone need to purchase a copy of this collection of wonderful spectator writings? Which well, we well, you are the brand ambassador. You are the great brand ambassador <laughs> for the spectator, so I thank you so much, and thank you, because you are launching the book in a couple of weeks. Looking so forward to it. Thank you very much, Paul. Uh, basically, it's the best of the last few years. It's got covers, writers. I, I had to go through 1,500. I couldn't get everybody. I, sorry, David, I couldn't get oh. articles in. Oh, I so know. you're good enough for the lunch, I but know, not for the book. No, but uh, getting 1,500 down to down to 80 was uh, pretty pretty <laughs> tricky. It was great the, work. What about that cartoon when I got elected? Had to... uh, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, is yes, that in there? Exactly. May well be. You oh, know. Okay. Helen Dale is in there. Lots of great writers. The point is, it really looks at the whole Turnbull, Abbott, that whole period, uh, which is just fantastic. And to see the writing of people, what impresses me about the sort of writers that we get is that they are so prescient about what is going to happen. And they're all people like John Stone and James Allen and others, they're always there on the money telling you what's going to so happen a couple weeks of weeks before it happens. Purchase this? It's out now. All right. it's out now. Out now. All good yes. bookshops. Yes. And if they're not stocking it, they're a shithouse bookshop. <laughs> uh, so otherwise, uh, go and get in touch. Of course, okay. Wilkinson Publishing are putting this yes. one out as well. We'll launch it in a couple of weeks' Thank time. You, Paul. All right. So uh, the same-sex marriage vote, um, again, uh, has been updated. The long national nightmare will be over. The debate will be over in a couple of weeks. Uh, sorry, by Wednesday of next week. You'll see the results 10 o'clock here on Sky News Eastern Daylight Time. 12.6 uh, million people have voted. 78.5% of people have voted. So, I think this survey proves we can handle voluntary voting. Mm. I think this also proves that we can get sent a ballot in the paper, uh, in the post, and we don't have to... Because what I can't stand about the system as it currently stands is the open-jawed dickheads um, who are dragged to the process, dumbed down the process. It means we buy them all off at a, at a million paces. That's my view anyway, but Hugh, why am I wrong? Uh, I had this conversation with you last week. You know? <laughs> uh, no, it, it, well, I've got people, reinforcements uh, people now have had an out. absolute gutful of the same-sex marriage debate. Right? Sure. Ninety percent of people say, "Just for God's sake, get it done." That's what this is about. They just think, "Right, just get it done. They're over it." <laughs> A normal election, state, federal, council, whatever, people uh, ha would would. Vote now because it's compulsory. But if you stopped making it being compulsory, the numbers would just start to slide more and more and more. Especially if you had idiots like you see at the moment in the in the parliament with uh, this situation with uh, the dual citizenship. How annoyed is everybody about it? Everyone's annoyed. It doesn't mean they'll go out and vote. They'll just say, I'll oh, bugger them all. So what you would have is not what you suggest, where, oh, it's just the certain people who are sick of voting won't turn up. More and more people won't come and vote. And that'll be the problem. And let's be honest, everybody needs to have a say. They need to take responsibility for their democracy, they need to take responsibility for what happens to them and the decision-making processes of the people they elect. And that's why I believe it needs to be compulsory, because they're paying their taxes, mm. they're putting their money in, they need to have a say, and everyone should be having a say. But, but my biggest, the biggest motivator for me about voting should be uh, uh, don't vote, don't whinge. If you want to have a whinge, if you are invested, if you care where the money's going, you should be motivated enough to go off and vote, don't you think, David? Yeah, and, and when, when it's something compulsory and you get fined if you don't do it, you can't call it a right anymore. You know, we don't have a, don't have a right to pay taxes. We have an obligation to pay taxes. Yeah. If you don't do it, watch out. And, and most countries, nearly every country actually, um, gets by quite nicely with uh, voluntary voting. 60, 70 per cent mostly is the kind of turnouts that uh, the, the bulk of them get. Um, nobody suggests that they're an inferior democracy to ours. I don't, I don't see the, the uh, problem. And in any case, there's two things, in a voluntary voting situation, there's two things the candidates and the parties have to achieve. One is a vote for them, the other one is a vote at all. Mm. And yeah. that's, that's, you know, two important points. But Rowan, before yeah. I get your view, can I yet again prove uh, example A from Channel 9 tonight about why I don't support compulsory voting? These people all have a say. <laughs> <laughs> We're live. Every year I watch this and I thrive. I want, I need to be on this show this year. 
If anyone wants a tip, just get on Humidor in the Cup to lay down Mazair. This goes to wear after the Cup, so say something different. Oh, after the Cup. <laughs> 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 Rowan? Yeah, I used, if it's to, I, used, I used to think compulsory voting was a good thing, but I agree totally with you, you and David. The last few years, I think the same-sex marriage shows it, that, and, and I disagree with Hugh for the simple reason that it makes politicians think that they are better than they are when there's the vote there. When you've got a bad government and people don't turn out to vote, it's because they're not inspired by you lot. That's why they don't turn out to vote. When they are inspired by you lot, so uh, the point about compulsory voting is it hides bad governments. The point of uh, voluntary uh, voting shows inspirational governance and this issue showed that people were passionate about it on both sides which is why they went out so I absolutely agree with that I think after 33 days of blanket TV coverage blanket campaign oh. coverage you'd, you'd have you'd be if, if the I've got the shits factor is why 78 percent of people voted in this I reckon you'd get the same no, out of blanket but, but the, I know you, uh, David threw around this, this figure that you know 70 percent of people that's just not what happens in like in the UK the US there isn't 70 percent of people who vote Right? It's sometimes it gets down to 30, 20 per cent in a lot of inspired. democracies, right? So that's that's the, right, they're not inspired, not, but, but also, so and they're not, not engaged. Your game. And the reality is, is that you look at, say, in the US, where they spend millions upon millions of dollars on getting out the vote, and they still don't get a huge vote out there. Mm. Same with the UK. So, you know, I, I, th I don't agree that if you say, oh, if you have an inspiring leader, you'll get people there. Not necessarily, right? Interesting because mentioned... people need to be engaged. And if they're not engaged, they're not going to vote. And everyone needs to be engaged, whether they like it or not. You yeah. can't Interesting. force them to be engaged. <laughs> yes, you can. No, you yes, can't. You, can. you eat your and vegetables and you like it. You obviously don't have any as, teenagers I know. As a marginal seat, no. te as marginal seat MP and campaigner for my whole political life, basically, I can tell you this: is that people do get engaged if you get out there and you talk to them. But. Yeah, this idea that you say, oh, look, there's this percentage, they don't want to be there, very few don't want people to be there. Very few. few very few. Yeah, and, and but just like, it's only raising David's comment, you don't pay your tax, you get fined. That's right. You don't vote, you get fined. That's just how the democracy well, yeah, works. Yeah, but let's be That's honest, compulsory be. voting allows Labor to go and get religious, certain religious groups <laughs> and corral the them in. Who get corral religious. them in. What and you guys groups? have been doing that in Western <laughs> Sydney oh, you've been to Hillsong, for years. Yeah. You've been doing it there. Rubbish. And uh, that is one the reason we should get rid of compulsory mate, voting because you, you see, should, your vote you would crash. Now, you, you should go visit your Hillsong, vote mate. If crash. you visit Hillsong, you'll see most of the Liberal Party cabinets there. <laughs> now, I'll get in trouble from Peter Crindlin if I don't point out, of course, we don't have compulsory voting in this country. We have compulsory attendance <laughs> in this country. Anyway, but... Yeah, big difference. The, the point's...